Hello kids, welcome back. We are here now still in the Easter season, so we are going to continue the story of the resurrection. Now you remember last time we told the story all the way up from, uh, from that end of the first day of Easter, of Easter Sunday, right? All the way up until after Jesus had ascended into heaven, the Holy Spirit had started to give birth to the new church, right? And, uh, and they started spreading the gospel. And if you remember, at the end of the last part, right, we, were, we met a new disciple who would be called to be an apostle, right? And that was St. Paul, who was originally called Saul. And he had this profound conversion experience, right? And in St. Paul, from him, we learn in a special way that the risen Christ, that Jesus is alive in the church, right? And the church is alive in him, right? Because he said, he said to Saul, what? Why are you persecuting my friends, my disciples? No, he said, why are you persecuting me, Saul? The church is alive in me and I am alive in the church, right? And so when St. Paul became a part of the church, he really wanted to teach people that. Well, he wanted to teach people that so much that he spent the rest of his life traveling around as far as he could uh, all around the world, right? And bringing the gospel to people and helping to set up churches in different towns, in different cities, right? And helping to, uh, helping the church to grow, helping people to know Jesus uh, and to follow him, right? And so, um, which they could do because he was still alive in the church, just in a different way, right? And he still is alive in the church today, just in a different way, right? Um, so as he's going around establishing these churches, he's gonna, even though he's going around from one local church to another, right? He's gonna, he's going to uh, try and stay in touch with them and help guide them and help them to keep growing and help them to keep following Jesus, and so he's going to write down letters. And these letters are going to be, some of them anyway, are going to be the first books that are written as part of that part of the Bible that is part of the Christian Bible, right, that we call the New Testament. Now, if you think back, uh, I'm sure you've learned in your, your atrium lessons, I've seen the materials that you use to learn about the books of the Bible, right? And, and you open up that Bible and what do you see inside? That the Bible is what? It's, a, it's kind of a library of books. It's a book made up of many books, right? And so some of those books are these letters that St. Paul wrote, right? And that first part of the Bible, right, was what's called the Old Testament. That's before Jesus was born the story I want to tell you today, which is part three of the resurrection story, because it's part of how the risen Christ is still working alive in the church, is how that New Testament came to be, right? So it starts with Paul, right? He's the first one to start writing it down. Now, when I say it starts with Paul, that might seem kind of strange, right? Because if you remember, Paul came into the story pretty late, right? A lot of those stories of what happened in what we call the New Testament today, those happened earlier, right? But they didn't start writing it down right away. They didn't write it down as it was happening. That happened later, right? And this is important to remember because sometimes uh, we hear uh, that, um, that it's only in Scripture that we learn the good news, the gospel, the truth that Jesus passed on. But we know that that can't be the case, right? Because for many years, they were passing on the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the truth that he passed on, just like he told them to before he went up to heaven, right? He said, teach them all that I have commanded you and teach them to be my disciples. And so they did, but they didn't have a Bible yet. They didn't have the New Testament. They had the Old Testament, so they had part of the Bible, right? They had scriptures, right? But they didn't have a full Bible yet. They didn't have the New Testament. So Paul's the first one to start writing down things that will start to become part of that part of the Bible that we call the New Testament. He writes letters to many of the churches that he was going to visit or that he did visit. To the Corinthians in Corinth, 
to the Ephesians in Ephesus, to the Romans in Rome, to the Galatians in Galatia, and on down the list. So lots of the New Testament is these letters of St. Paul. And some of the other apostles wrote letters as well, uh, such as Peter, James, Jude, and there's one more, but we're going to save the one more uh, for last. Uh, because next we're going to talk about the fact that eventually, remember I said they didn't, uh, they didn't tell the story of what was happening in Jesus' life as it happened. It wasn't until later that, uh, that one of Jesus' apostles, one of his 12 apostles, his 12 closest friends who became those first bishops, those first priests, decides to write down what comes to be called a gospel. That word gospel just means the good news. And what is the essence of the good news? It's the story of Jesus, his life, death, and resurrection, right? And so when we hear about different types of books of the Bible, and one category, one type, is the gospels. There's four of them. We're going to hear about all four of them in just a second here, right? But the Gospels are those books that tell the story of Jesus, of his life, death, and resurrection. The Old Testament is all before Jesus, and there's other things that come after Jesus, right? Like Paul's letters, for example, right? right? Were written after the story of Jesus, right? After the story takes place, but before it's written down, right? Might be kind of confusing, I know. But Matthew was that apostle who was previously a tax collector, right? So he helped collect money uh, from the people, right? Uh, and, uh, and, and he was kind of working with people who were working with Ro- the Romans who weren't very, weren't very good to God's people. And so, uh, so God's people didn't really trust Matthew at first. And um, so there's lots of interesting stuff about, about Matthew's own story. But the, one of the most important things that he did was that part of the way that he spread the gospel, now remember, all the apostles, except Judas, right? And Judas is going to have a replacement named Matthias, but we don't have time to go into that story. But all of the apostles are going to spread the good news of Jesus, but only a couple of them are actually going to write the story down in uh, in a way that we um, know today to be part of the Bible, right? So the first of them is Matthew. Now, before I move on to the next one, I want to point out that the four, um, the four gospels, they all have a symbol that is used to symbolize them. And and by the end of the story, you'll, you'll learn where it comes from too. Uh, But, uh, but the symbol for Matthew's gospel is the angel, right? Or sometimes it's described just as a man, right? But the angel, right? is the symbol for Matthew's gospel, okay? Um, and by the way, these symbols are in our church in the big rose window that's in, up in, as you're, if you're walking out towards the main entrance of the church, right? And you look up over the choir loft where our organ players play and some of our other uh, musicians help us lead music from sometimes, Right? If you look up, there's a big window with these four symbols of the four gospels. So, so that was so Matthew was the first one to write down a gospel, and uh, sometime around the time that Matthew wrote down his gospel, the next gospel is going to be written down. Some people even think that the next one that we're going to talk about might have even been written first. I don't know, but uh, but the church has for a long, long time has believed that Matthew's was written first. So it's a pretty good bet that Matthew's was written first uh, because they started teaching that closer to when it happened. So that actually makes a lot of sense. Uh, So the next gospel is by St. Mark. Now, was St. Mark one of the 12? Let's see. Well, let's see. We had Peter, James, John, uh, Andrew. I I don't remember a Mark. Mark was not one of the 12. Mark comes into the story later. Now, we... We think that Mark might have been kind of in the background. Uh, He might have been around at the time of the Gospels, but he doesn't show up at any point in the Gospel. Uh, If he was there, he was very humble when he told the story, and he knew the story wasn't about him, so he didn't talk about him being there. But Mark was a close friend and follower 
of Peter, right? And so we have always held and taught, right, that the, the main source for Mark's gospel, so assuming that Mark wasn't there, where is he getting these stories from? He's getting them from Peter, right? Think about that. Mark's gospel is coming from Peter. Most of these stories are coming straight from Peter, the, the, uh, that fisherman who became the great shepherd, the first pope, the one that Jesus put in charge of his church. And he's going to pass on these stories to his friend Mark, and Mark's going to write them down in his gospel. Mark wrote the shortest of the gospels, right? That's one of the things that that is uh, Mark's gospel is known for. Matthew's gospel is known for, uh, among other things, for uh, for having sometimes very detailed teachings, right? Matthew's kind of a teacher, right? Mark is a lot more action-packed, right? Like, he gets straight to the point. He loves to use words like immediately when telling the story. Like, immediately they dropped their nets and followed him, right? So Mark understands that the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, it's not some boring old story. It's exciting. It's an adventure, right? Following Jesus is an adventure. Mark understands that, right? Uh, And so uh, perhaps it makes sense to us that the symbol for Mark's gospel is a lion, right? We often, when we think of lions, we, we often think of bravery and courage, Right, So it makes sense to me anyway that Mark's gospel, which really tells the story of Jesus as, a, as an adventure, that it, it would be symbolized by a lion. Uh, so next, um, next what's going to happen is there's somebody else who wasn't one of the 12 who's going to write the next gospel, and that's Luke. Luke also had somebody that he uh, was learning from a lot. Now, Luke actually learned from a lot of people, right? Luke was kind of like, he really was a historian. He was originally a doctor. But when I say he was a historian, what does that mean? It means that he really tried to, to, to study history, to study what had happened in days before him, although more recent days, right? Uh, and and to really to really ask around and travel around gathering information and asking people who were there what happened. Uh, And so Luke, uh, we know that some of the traveling that he did was with St. Paul, right? And part of the reason that we know that is that Luke is going to write a sequel to his gospel. Sequel in quotes. It's kind of like a sequel, right? You You know what a sequel is like? Um, like when, when, uh, when a, a movie came out or a, or a book that you really liked, uh, and then, they, and then they, they come out with another one and they keep the story going, right? Well, what's the whole point of what we're doing right now? Why are we still telling the resurrection story when we already talked about Jesus going up into heaven? Because the story keeps going, right? Jesus is alive in the church, right? So St. Luke tells us, of what of some of those awesome things that happened in the life of the early church after Jesus ascended. In fact, in the opening chapter of his sequel, Jesus is still with them and he's gonna ascend to heaven. He's gonna tell them to wait for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's gonna come and it's like this explosion of grace, right? And like everything starts happening. It's in Luke's sequel, if you will, uh, that we meet St. Paul and hear the story of Saul like we talked about in the last episode, right? Of Saul persecuting the church and then meeting the risen Jesus on the way and having his conversion experience. We get all of that from St. Luke, right? And Luke, it makes sense that he would have known that story because he traveled with St. Paul because in that sequel, which is called Acts of the Apostles, there's a couple points, more than a couple, there's a few points where suddenly Luke doesn't say Paul and them traveled to the next city. He says, we traveled to the next city. And so Luke's in a very subtle way. He's not wanting to draw attention to it, but I'd be pretty excited. I'd want people to know. And he's also, he's just being honest. He's telling the story. I was there. I was with him. We traveled to the next city, right? So Luke traveled with St. Paul, right, during part of his travels, right? And then Luke went around, as I said, uh, and got information from a lot of people. 
uh, and Luke, we really think that Luke probably had the chance to interview Mary, our Blessed Virgin Mary, Jesus' mother and our mother, right? Our spiritual mother. Why do we think that? Because Luke tells stories that other people don't tell. The stories of when Mary received the message from the angel, right? Uh, and that, that she would have Jesus. And then she went to visit her cousin Elizabeth. She, he tells us the story of when Mary and Joseph presented Jesus in the temple. And then he tells us the story of the story of when Jesus was 12 years old and he was lost in the temple and they found him on which day? The third day, right? Which is kind of a foreshadowing that on the resurrection that he'd come back on the third day, right? So Luke has all these stories that he probably learned from Mary, right? Um, it's possible he learned it from somebody else who heard it from Mary, but it's pretty cool that Luke was going around. He wanted to get the big picture, the full story. He was going around getting the full story of Jesus as much as he could, right? So he's going to write the third gospel. And last, but and his sequel, the Acts of the Apostles. So last but not least, uh, our last gospel is going to come from the last of the apostles. So by this point, the story of Jesus is being told not only by word of mouth, but people are starting to write it down, right? And so different gospels are out there, right? And people are starting to hear these gospels and read these gospels. And now the last of the apostles to be alive, St. John. This is not kind of an interesting picture of St. John, huh? This is kind of like the country western St. John, right? He's, I call him Icky Breaky St. John. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, so this is John the Apostle. Oh, I forgot to tell you, Luke's symbol, I don't know where, it, I, I already flipped away from it, but Luke's symbol was the ox. You see the ox, right? Well, John's symbol is the eagle, right? Now, the reason why John is the eagle really makes a lot of sense, because there's some really interesting things about John being the last one alive and the last one to write his gospel. Um, one of those things is that, um, that, remember, he was the only one there at the foot of the cross, the only of the, of the 12 apostles who was there at the foot of the cross with Jesus. And he's also the only one who's not going to be martyred. So John is still living and helping to spread the gospel and helping to to be one of the shepherds of the church, one of the one of the bishops and 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 teachers and leaders of the church, right? And and many of his friends have already laid down their life for Christ, right? And meanwhile, all of these different stories are going around, but John was there for it. Right? John was there and John is going to write a gospel that has lots of stories that don't show up in the other gospels. Now, the other gospels, there's a lot of common stories that show up in the other ones. Like I said, there's there's some unique things, like like Luke has those unique stories of when when Jesus was was a child and, and even before he was born, right, from Mary, right? Um, but John, John is gonna have all kinds of stories that the others don't. Because it's almost as if as if the other gospels are already out there and Christians which that's mainly who John's writing to. He's writing to people who are already following Jesus. They know these stories. But here comes John who was there for it all. And he's, it's as if he's saying, you guys, there's even more. Did I tell you about this time that we were at a wedding? We were at a wedding and they ran out of wine. And Jesus' mother was there. And she asked him, she didn't even ask him specifically what to do. He knew what he was supposed to do. She just said, they have no wine, right? Like she does for us. Like she, she goes to Jesus for us and tells Jesus when we need help, right? And Jesus knows what to do, right? Uh, so John has all these great stories that the others don't have because he was there for it all, right? Um, but the other reason, and this is where the eagle that starts to make sense is John. John, like I said, he was the last one alive. He had been around for a while, and they had had lots of time to think and pray about 
not only what happened when Jesus was with them, but what did it all mean? And so John has a lot of deep understanding of who Jesus was, that he was God, right? That he was the second person of Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And what it means that God became man. And what the whole point of everything that he was doing was, John has a lot of deep understanding of that. It's as if, it's as if he's looking at everything from high up, from up above, like an eagle, right? So John's symbol is the eagle. Now, where do these symbols come from? The eagle, the ox, the angel, and the lion. Where do they come from? Well, John writes a kind of sequel too. John's going to write a few things. He's going to write his gospel. He's going to write three letters that are part of the Bible. That Those letters are kind of like John helping people understand his gospel. Is kind of what they are. Um, and then his sequel, if you will is a story about later in his life when he was in exile. In other words, he had been cast out, right? Because remember, a lot of the Christians were persecuted, right? And he was on this island called Patmos. And while he was there, while saying Mass, he had these, these elaborate visions, right? And some people think that these visions are all about the end of time. Well, they do tell us things about the end of time. And they do tell us things about heaven, but they also tell us things about our time and how when we're going through difficult times, when we're experiencing trials and tribulations and all kinds of difficulties, how God is at work in the midst of them. And you know what? God is fighting for us. He's fighting a battle for us. And you know what? He's the winner. That's what the resurrection is all about, is that Jesus is the winner. He won the battle for us. He's fighting for us. And the victory is his. And so if the victory is his and he's fighting for us, what does that mean? It means the victory is ours. right? And so we really see that in a powerful way in John's vision, which is the last book of the Bible. And it's called Revelation. And in this vision, there's lots of parts to this vision. And some of it's very confusing. Right? So we're not going to get into it. But one of the parts is he sees four beasts around the throne, four animals, kind of like animals, around this throne. And you know what they are? One of them looks like an eagle. One of them looks like a lion. One of them looks like an angel or a man. And one of them looks like an ox. That's where we get those four symbols from. Right? And you know what else? As we see that God is fighting for us when we're going through hard times, it's also in that vision of John that we're going to meet St. Michael the Archangel. And St. Michael is also going to be uh, fighting to take care of somebody else who's important to us, Mary. The next episode is going to pick up with that part. It's actually in the 12th chapter of Revelation. It's in the Bible and it's it helps us understand a lot of how God continues to work in the church throughout history. So we'll talk to you next time. God bless you, kids. Happy Easter.